Hello and welcome, I'm Alice Gerjuk and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. Recently, the first official US trade mission has arrived in Kiev to explore new cooperation opportunities. The delegation involves CEOs of 12 American companies who are interested in doing business in Ukraine. So what's attractive about Ukraine for foreign entrepreneurs? To talk more about this, we welcome to the studio today Vitaly Kravchuk, Senior Research Fellow at the Institute for Economic Research in Kiev. Hello and thank you for joining us today. Hi. So, this first official U.S. trade mission to Ukraine, what does this mean? Well, it's uh, as part of the Department of State in the United States, there is U.S. Commercial Service, which organizes reg regular trade missions to different countries, where they get the inter companies interested in doing, interested in doing business with uh, whatever, Ukraine, Russia, with or maybe countries. not Russia, but uh, yeah. So, and it seemed that it was one of the first such missions to Ukraine. Of course, so we understand this, but kind of uh, how important is it for Ukraine? That's what I mean. Well, there are plenty of unofficial trade missions from time to time, where, for example, investment banks that are working in Ukraine gather some potential investors, bring them to Ukraine, uh, get them to meet some people in the government, in the think tanks, such as ours, for example. And uh, but official uh, mission means that uh, there is sufficient interest uh, from the sufficient number of companies in the United States uh, to merit the spending of the fisc of the public funds of the U United States public funds to find to fund this kind of mission. So it means that the level of interest is sufficient, uh, sufficient great. Although we do have already uh, U.S. Ukraine uh, trade. The, the Chamber of Commerce, where uh, quite a number of U.S. companies that are do already doing business in Ukraine, but uh, definitely new companies would be welcome. Well, you're generally. saying that this is a very positive uh, sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have an interesting and important soundbite to listen also. Let's watch. This trade mission is a very positive signal. It shows that U.S.-Ukraine commercial relations are strong and growing stronger. And more broadly, it shows that Ukraine is headed in the right direction. Today we have done an analysis of new opportunities and support for powerful investments in such areas as processing, innovation, and co-production. The meeting of such large companies is an indicator of real reforms, real changes in Ukraine. Well, also, Stepan Kubiev, uh, first deputy prime minister of Ukraine, uh, said that our country and the United States have reached a new level of cooperation, the highest in the history of the two nations. Would you agree with this statement? Uh, well, yeah, but there is an important caveat. Trade uh, in normal times is usually growing, so the last year's results are frequently the best in the history. Could you be more specific about the results? I mean, uh, U.S. is still not that great, that large of the market for Ukrainian goods, as compared, for example, to uh, European Union or even Russia. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, the trade is growing. It's to the tune of maybe of one billion per year. How do you think? Not what so are the main obstacles for Ukrainian companies to enter American market? Due to the distance, or well, distance too, of course. Uh, there are quite a lot of closer markets uh, and there is problem with getting goods by sea if you could get, you need to get through the straits and through the Gibraltar so logistics is not not that good mm -hmm. unless you go by air so it's it's a limited uh, limited factor to the degree and also US market is uh, kind of a different level uh, in they have Mm -hmm. There's different barriers for entry than other usual markets for Ukrainian goods, so it's it's, not, it's getting uh, it's getting used to to the demands of the U.S. market is is challenging for Ukrainian companies. Well, but at the same time, according to Stepan Kubiv, first deputy prime minister of Ukraine, um, exports to the United States uh, in 2018 grew by 32 percent, which is quite a figure. So, what do we export to the U.S.? Well, 32 percent is it's good, I guess. Uh, Quite good. <laughs> yes, but again, in absolute terms, it's a few hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. Just so you understand, if you if you if you if you are growing with trade with 
uh, the European Union, then uh, by 30 percent, then we talk about several billions of dollars. But in the case of US, well, we mostly uh, export commodities such as uh, fertilizers, a little bit uh, of uh, metals, uh, but uh, not very much in terms of processed goods. So a little bit of agricultural goods, so it's more or less mm -hmm. uh, raw commodities. Okay. Well, the representatives of 12 major American uh, companies have arrived to Ukraine to have um, around 60 meetings uh, with the Ukrainian entrepreneurs, if I'm not mistaken. So could you explain us what will be happening and what are these companies? Who are they? Well, uh, as I understand, that they were not publicly listed, um, so I'm not sure. No, I mean, what do they produce? What spheres are they interested in? What? I, I guess the primary in, in the interest would be to maybe to invest in some Ukrainian businesses. Pro, there is one possibility. Okay. And the second possibility is to sell uh, goods to Ukrainian, for example, agricultural producers, uh, some equipment to Ukrainian manufacturing mm -hmm. factors. So I guess that. Uh, the main uh, idea would be either investment in Ukraine or U.S. exports uh, or extending U.S. exports to, to Ukraine. To, to Ukraine, for, yeah, in terms of... Probably. Well, I think investment um, climate is uh, um, probably uh, a bigger priority for us. Um, but could you tell us uh, what spheres would they be interested in in the Ukrainian market to invest in? Well, uh, the obvious answer would be agriculture, IT, a little bit maybe trade to less degree. Um, but uh, yeah, the most ob the most uh, ob uh, clear answer would be yeah, in the agriculture and uh, uh, business services, IT services. Uh, but we think to, to lesser degree it could be in the in the trade. Mm -hmm. How would you estimate the current uh, investment climate in Ukraine? <laughs> well, I guess it's better than it was before, but still, uh, when uh, you ask somebody that doesn't know a lot of, about Ukraine, then you have the answer, it's um, this corrupt country, where is out of corruption, uh, revolution and so on. So it's uh, getting this past this first obstacle to get people interested enough to overlook this first impression. So the, the main obstacle is judiciary system, you say? This if I mean, corruption is happening? I mean, the first, uh, the first problem is this perception of corruption. Okay. Well, corruption, corruption also <laughs> on the later stage, but uh, I mean that uh, lack of awareness of uh, strong points about Ukraine other than this corruption, war is, and war with Russia. Uh, this may be the two first uh, answers that we, we would get when you ask what you know about Ukraine, some random business executive. And yeah, that's, uh, that's maybe the first problem. And this kind of missions at least get people uh, to the table and to really get to know what's, what's happening in Ukraine, to evaluate more objectively the business the opportunities. Side. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So. This kind of missions help to over, over, overcome this first step. Then, of course, there is the second step when people, when the companies uh, do consider investment and maybe get uh, into, uh, get or some obstacles or some real corruption, not really, uh, not only perception of the corruption uh, or some just bureaucratic problems. That would be the <laughs> that would be the second uh, problem. Bureaucracy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but still, uh, we do we did simplify a lot uh, in terms of business registration, getting really different permits and licenses. So we reduced a little bit the scope for the corruption, where the foreign companies that try to invest in Ukraine can uh, really meet corruption. So that's 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 probably the positive step. We also did uh, some a little bit in terms of harmonizing our regulations with. Uh, uh, international standards, these EU rules. That means, for example, that, that uh, companies that are used to doing business in the EU will find it simpler to do business in Ukraine. So it's also the positive step. So, but still, uh, this negative perceptions about Ukraine are quite a challenge. 
Well, how to target them? How to target this problem with corruption, with bureaucracy that you mentioned? Well, we do have some, a few institutions such as uh, Ukraine Investment Promotion Office that tries to help foreign investors to navigate uh, Ukrainian uh, market, uh, to get them settled, so to say, in Ukraine maybe. And that's a positive step. Of course, now it's more or less funded by the international donors, as as funded I think. Uh, so getting this, this on the permanent basis probably would be uh, also a good step. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned that Ukraine has improved its, its investment climate still. And um, degree, yeah. in conditions of war, meaning that we have been in conditions of war since 2014, we managed to, to better this, uh, this impression, this stance on possible partnership worldwide. How did we, how did we do that? Well, we, we just... So what, what's, what, what's better? Who... Okay. Yeah, what's, what, what, what has been improved? Okay, as I said, uh, a lot of, uh, quite a few issues related to the registration of business, to certification of your products, to uh, getting different licenses and permits, reduced the number of inspections was reduced, uh, so, uh, in few areas there was a liberalization in terms of uh, less regulation. I mean, in, in energy market, for example, there was um, more freedom to do business and with the goal to, to have a free market. Uh, so, yeah, the, and quite a few reforms to the bankruptcy regulation, for example. So, for example, if your business fails in Ukraine, then you have a better chance to get out with your, more of your money. Or your business partner, for example, have problems, then you have more, more chance to get your money back now, I guess. Uh, so, quite, uh, quite a wide range of, uh, of regulations that were simplified. Uh, is was the main progress, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem uh, remains with people who apply these regulations. For example, fiscal service still uh, has there were some reforms in terms of, for example, reforms of large tax pay office, which probably would service some large also investors too. They uh, did get some uh, institutional improved capacity a little bit, but still uh, fiscal service is a lot legs behind a lot in terms mm -hmm. of its capacity to service uh, people and not just press them for money. I guess uh, courts are still in the process of reform also. Again, yeah, there ag again, there was quite significant progress in terms of rules of litigation. Uh, you can now get to the judgment faster, actually. But still, uh, again, uh, we have a, well, quite a... Uh, we have quite a small number of judges to administrate this justice. And again, this means that court cases can last uh, for quite a long time, even regardless of any corruption or not corruption. You can just wait for a lot of time, for a lot of time if you need to get some court judgment in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a problem for, for, the, for the foreign investors. <laughs> Well, let's see. The reforms are still ongoing. Let's see the results. But in regard of improving investment cl climate in Ukraine, Stepan Kubiv was also talking about Ukraine abolishing all standards and adopting the European ones. So what standards was he talking about? Well, uh, there is very, very, for already for several years, I guess, since 2014, in this long process to replace the Soviet by Soviet standards into uh, standards that are harmonized with international standards, such as promulgated, promoted by the International Standards Organization or, or EU-based standards. Uh, standards of manufacturing production. Yeah, standards that uh, govern how, uh, how you produce the different products, standards of safety, uh, construction standards, so it's quite by the wide range of require technical requirements to h how you produce safely and mm -hmm. uh, improve the quality yeah, of goods produced yeah, in Ukraine and achieve uh, pass minimum required quality for your products. And uh, because there is literally thousands of the standards which need to be replaced, this 
<laughs> this is probably this, pro this process is ongoing for maybe already four years. But still, there is a, lot, a little bit to go. Uh, but again, it means that when uh, you create some companies, U.S. companies, for example, invest in Ukrainian manufacturing, it means that, that they have simply uh, simply go in getting their products uh, certified in, in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They could have more trust in Ukraine. Well, let's hope that this uh, that Ukraine will be fast in adopting this uh, new European standards. So far, we ran out of time, but thank you for your interesting comments and thank you for this conversation. Yeah, thanks. That was Vitaly Kravchuk, Senior Research Fellow at the Institute for Economic Research in Kiev. Thank you for watching Head to Head and stay tuned for more with UATV.